So recently I've been getting a ton of questions about how I edit Rocket League videos. Some of the questions I've answered and some I haven't quite covered. So I figured I'd put it all into one video and show how I make a montage from start to finish. Okay, first things first, before you record anything, you need recording software. There's lots of choices for this one like OBS or whatever. I use Shadowplay. I find it really easy, really convenient. Um, I think it only works on NVIDIA cards though, so if you have an AMD, you do have to find something else. So these are my shadow play settings. The instant replay link doesn't matter, it's for something else. I have it set to custom, it's recording at 60 FPS, the resolution in game because it doesn't really matter. My monitor is 1080p and my bitrate is the max. Again, the software doesn't really matter as long as you can record the game at 60 FPS. Okay, so once we have the recording software out of the way, we then hop into the game. So first things first to getting a nice looking image in the game, you have to use the highest quality video settings, of course. And keep in mind, if you're using reshade, you don't want to be using lens flares because it can mess up reshade. Um, I've been told by people not to use motion blur, so I don't turn that one on. And transparent goalposts can also mess with the reshade. So these are the settings you want, generally, unless you have something specific in mind. The next step is using Reshade and Dolly Cam, which I have two separate videos on because they do take a little bit to explain, so I'll link those. So I have Reshade running and I have Bakke's Mod installed and everything, everything's set there. And I want to touch on something that a lot of people don't, I actually haven't really seen anybody talk about it. And it's, it's separate from the technical side and it's more on the creative side. The secret to getting good footage is being good at getting footage. It's not about pressing the buttons in the right way, it's understanding the rules of composition and photography and cinematography to be able to create a pleasing and engaging and interesting image. I was making films before I was making Rocket League edits, so I was able to carry over my knowledge about cinematography and bring it into Rocket League. So I'd recommend doing some research about rule of thirds and general basic photography composition will help you a lot. Stuff like framing and depth. You can see in a lot of my shots I have like these really dynamic poses like this where you have the car as the foreground and then the background of the ball and I have like moving images and stuff. Also something that people don't talk about. There's a style to how much camera movement you want. So like in the old days, like old storm montages from 2017, before they had Bakke's mod, they would record everything by hand. So a lot of the shots would be a lot more stationary. What that does is the camera doesn't move as much. It doesn't like a whip out of a shot because when you do speed ramping and the camera's moving as it accelerates the camera's gonna whip kind of out of the shot rather than the older videos the camera would be pretty stationary throughout and it would just be the stuff in the scene moving quickly hopefully that makes sense but it's just something to consider when you want to develop your own style it depends on what kind of movement you want and what kind of energy you want to bring to the piece and when recording footage, make sure you're recording at 10% generally is what the majority of people record at. I know some people stylize it differently and record at like 25 or depending on the shot, you know, five or 50. But I would say 99% of my shots are 10% speed. So you wanna record the shot at a slower speed so that when you speed it up and post, it stays smooth throughout. Okay, so once you have your footage, then comes the fun part, organization. Woo! I want to mention this because I haven't really seen anybody else talking about it, but it's I think it's really useful to have a clean and organized system for recording your videos. Otherwise, if you have to change something later or something, it's really easy to fall apart if you're not concise and clean with your organization. So there's no rules for how to organize your stuff. This is how I personally do it. If you have a better way or want to do it differently, by all means, go ahead and do it. This is just what I do. So I have it organized based on my client montages, my ATR videos, the Pulse videos, RLEC, which is old, and then my YouTube personal stuff, and then obviously my old things. So in the client montages, I have the current videos I'm working on, and as well as the RFX intro, and then I have a folder for all the finished videos. So all of these are previous videos I've worked on. So say I go to the gyro video, I then have it organized by audio, footage, the shots that I had to motion track, the project files, textures, which was for something that I didn't use, Twitch clips was for the audio, and then I have the renders out here. Usually I'll make a folder for the renders, but it doesn't really matter. So in the audio, I have the music separated away from the sound effects. The footage, I organized by date. So you can see it took me a little bit under a month to record the whole thing here. So the date that I went in and recorded, I have all the footage from that. So I still have an individual shot from a project from a year ago, you can see Haunted Hallows. Wow, that's just the shot. Like I said before, I was experimenting with using 
not using Bacchus mod and just trying to get stationary shots and just seeing what works. So even then, when I didn't understand everything as well, I was still trying to find my own style. And so after all that boring organization work, we can finally get to the editing. I use After Effects. I recommend you use After Effects. You don't need to, but it is the best, in my opinion, for edits. So I'm using an older video here because it's already been laid out. Obviously, I import my footage. I have it organized into footage. Again, it's separated by date here, so it took a little bit under a month to record all the footage for this. So I start off by making a new composition. I make it these settings, doesn't really matter. I then drag in the music. Okay, I know the music's gonna be here, so I'll press in at this point, which sets the end point for the composition and then say right click trim comp to work area. So now I know that this is gonna be my work area and then I start laying in the footage. So first I go to one of my footage folders, double click to open this. I then find where I recorded the footage. I press alt left bracket to set my endpoint. I then find where I want it to stop and I press alt right bracket to set my endpoint. Drag that in and quick note, you press L to open up the audio levels and then open this waveform here. And this shows the waveform for the music. And a lot of people use this to sync their video to the song. So they'll go in here and find a point, like say this is a beat and then they come over here to this icon and then drag it out holding shift and then it snaps to this. So some people will go ahead and lay out like all the beats that they want to sync to before they start. I don't really do that. I just kind of work with it as I'm going and it it just kind of falls into place and then afterwards I'll go back through and make sure everything's synced up in time. Uh, you can do it however you want. Also another quick tip, when working with footage, it's so much easier to hold down shift while dragging everything around. It just snaps to everything differently. So say I duplicate this. Uh, I, I see a lot of people, like they'll have a clip and they want to line it up. So they go about here and then they go here and they're like, oh, there's this black screen. So I'll zoom in and then move this there and then now it's lined up and that technically works, but a much easier way of doing that is just holding down shift and then dragging and then it just snaps to the end of the clip and then I press left bracket and it brings the clip to the front and then it's lined up. So finding shortcuts to enhance your workflow makes it so much easier and so much faster to work. That's how I can make stuff so much faster than other people is just because it's so ingrained into my muscle memory that I can work without really thinking about it. So my main organization once I have all my clips laid out in sync to the song, say that these are my clips, I then press Control A, I select all of them, I right click, I say pre-compose. And what this does is it just merges them all into a layer that you can then open up later. So this is it pre-composed, so it's all one layer. But then if I double click this, it opens it up and then I can still work from everything from here. So it just consolidates everything and really simplifies the workflow and makes it a lot easier. So what I do is this was my main footage thing. Obviously it has, a, it has a ton of effects on it right now because I add that later, but you can still see like I have the base footage here and here and here and everything. So I start with that. Once I get all my footage in, I then, like I said, press control A, pre-compose, and then this becomes the main. And then this pre-comp, the one that consolidates everything becomes the final. And you can name these whatever you want. It doesn't really matter. For this one specifically, I tried doing this SFX thing, but it didn't work out. So don't, I mean, I, I don't use that in anything else. I pretty much just have these two. So this SFX here really should just be. So after all the organization stuff, we then have the actual editing. So I take this footage, it's recorded at 10% speed. Uh, if you want to make the comp longer, I just go to composition, composition settings, and then I have the time scale here. So I'll make this 15 seconds. Just drag this out. I press Control Alt T with the clip selected and that brings up this time remap thing. I then go to the start of my clip, again, holding down shift. I press the keyframe button. I go to the end, again, holding down shift so it snaps, press the keyframe. And that doesn't do anything on its own. But what that's doing is it's setting the end point for the start and the end of the clip. So then if I bring those closer, it'll take that entire distance and just scrunch it down into this time. And then you can see it plays faster. So that's the general idea with recording at 10% speed. It records this whole thing and then you scrunch it down so you have a lot more frames in between so the motion stays smooth regardless of what speed you play it at. So it's even faster now. So from there, you select both of these keyframes and I press F9, but you can also do right click, keyframe assistant, easy ease. And to get rid of that, you just select these, hold control and then click. 
Uh, the shortcut for that is just F9 on the keyboard. And then I press this graph editor button, which opens up the, these motion curves. And yours may look like this, or yours may look like this. Generally for editing, most of the time you're gonna be better off editing the value graph instead of the speed graph. I use the value graph for most of what I do, the speed graph uh, sometimes for like text or whatever. So they work a little differently. This one, you don't have as much control, the speed graph. You can only move this line like this. So you don't get as much control over the actual movement of the clip. But in the value graph, you can move the, the handles all the way in any way you want, and it gives you a lot of finer control. So the general idea with these curves is when it's straight, the footage plays back normally. This is the playback speed, it's just playing normally. When it's steeper, the video plays faster. The clip shoots at the beginning and then slows down. It can be a little hard to understand at first, but the more you work with it, the more it starts to make sense. And then if I bring this one, shoots, slows, and then accelerates out. And this, this acceleration is, is how you get smooth transitions across clips. So if I open up this other shot, again, pressing Control-Alt-T, keyframe, then bring these together, select, press F9, and then you have these motion curves again. So you can see it accelerates out and then this one starts slow, speeds up, and then ends slow, which is how it's gonna look by default when you press F9. So to get a smooth transition here, I want it to accelerate out of the clip and slow in. So I'll, knowing that the other one ends with this acceleration, so I'll have this one start with a similar acceleration. So it's a, it's a smooth, obviously, no. The clips are gonna be a little different every time, so you have to tweak it. I'm gonna get a better shot. So with this one, you can see that the camera's moving a lot more throughout the shot, so hopefully that'll work better. So again, I accelerate in, accelerate out, slows down and then speeds up, and then this one speeds up. Uh, it's not perfect, and I didn't design these shots to go back to back, so it's not gonna look perfect. But I do try to keep in mind uh, how the shots are gonna transition into each other when recording. So if you want it really harsh, you can do that. If you want it less harsh, you know, do this stuff. Uh, I say experiment. I'm not showing you mine because I don't want people to copy my curves because it doesn't really matter what your curves look like. If everybody makes it look the exact same as mine, then all the montages are gonna have the same velocity and feel and look as mine, which isn't what you want. You wanna develop your own personal style by taking in all this information and making it your own. Okay, so with time remapping out of the way, now we'll move on to the effects. Most of these are done with plugins, either the Sapphire effects or the Boris effects. I'd highly recommend you check them out. Uh, pay for it if you can, if not, you know, wink, wink. Pretty much anything you see that has S underscore in front of it is a Sapphire plugin, and anything that has BCC is a Boris FX plugin. So the first one we'll start with is the shake effect, which is a really great way to add impact and stylization to your montages. Also check out the Video Copilot FX console plugin. It lets you press control space and just search for effects instead of going to this effects and presets thing. It speeds up your workflow an insane amount. I'm on a different version of After Effects so I don't have it installed, but definitely install it. So the very basics of Shake, the two things you need to worry the most about are the amplitude and the frequency. The frequency is essentially how many times it shakes in a second or whatever. The amplitude is how much the shake actually is. So just baseline, you, you can see it's doing this kind of wiggle thing. It doesn't look great. So I'll turn the frequency up to like 11, doesn't really matter, and then the amplitude up a ton. And you can see it mirrors the corners of the video screen automatically, so you get this natural stuff. Also make sure you click motion blur. It just smooths everything together. The shake is split up into the X, the Y, and the tilt shake. If I turn this all the way down, the tilt is gone from the shake. And if I turn the X all the way down. So that's the general idea for this. If you turn this up more, you'll get more along the X. If you turn this up less, blah, 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 you know, and this one's for tilt. So obviously this is a ton of shake for the entire clip. So I don't want it to last the entire time. So what I'll do is I'll go to the front again, holding shift. I click the stopwatch to set a keyframe for the amplitude. I click my clip and I press U on the keyboard and then I press U again, and that will open up all of the keyframes on the clip. So it's just a nice shortcut to open up all the different keyframes that you have across the effects. So I, you can see I have this amplitude here set to this uh, amount at this keyframe. So if I go ahead and then I set it to zero, that will clear out all the shake. Now there's no more shake on the clip. 
but in this time you can see that it starts at 14 and it ends at zero and then as I scrub through it slows down it still looks kind of weird so I'll go in and press F9 open up the graph editor again I'm in value mode you can do this in speed but I prefer value mode you take this I just drag it all the way down and it's not perfect it's a lot of shake for a very stationary clip so the more you work with it you kind of see what works better but if I were to have this much shake I'd really want to have it as a point of impact in the song and the clip so that's shake and impact secondarily you can manually go in and affect the scale position and rotation of the clips you do this by selecting your clip pressing E pressing R and pressing P. And if you hold down shift after selecting one of those and then pressing the other one, they all pop up together. So what I'll do is, you know, I set a keyframe, I check the scale and then position, you know, rotate it how I want, it like this, and then go ahead to here. And then I'll set this back to 100. I'll set this to its default, which is 960 by 540. And I set the rotation to zero. And then from here, it's not great. So again, press F9 with all these. I'll go into the position. This one, for whatever reason, the value doesn't really work, so I have to use speed. I hold shift, I just drag these so it goes, it accelerates quickly out of it. I take this one. I'm right clicking, by the way, to open up this. I set the value, drag it down. And then I'll do the same for the rotation. These don't have to line up as well. Like if I want the scale to come in at a certain time later than the other ones, I can do that. So what I want to point out is there are no rules in the editing stuff. It's all up to your own personal taste. I'm showing this to explain the technique behind it, but by no means should you copy what I'm doing. You should be experimenting and finding what works for yourself. So I'll go back, I'll add that shake, I'll make this like four, bring up the amplitude, so this, press U, go by here, set this to zero, select F9, drag the curve down. And now it shakes and zooms out of the clip. Also, quick note, a lot of the transitions that I have, I, I, I work on these adjustment layers, but you can see like in between shots, it'll get brighter and the camera will blur. Uh, it's really simple. All I do is I come here a few frames before, I take the exposure effect, exposure, and I take the BCC fast lens blur, and I drag these onto an adjustment layer, uh, layer new, adjustment layer. So I have it blur on the cut point between the shots, and then unblur as it goes through. Same with the exposure. Okay, so again, ignoring all this extra stuff like the name tags and everything, once I have the shots and the effects, what I want, again, I pre-comp everything, go to the final. I then do what's called the CC or the color grade. First thing I do is I go into Blackmagic Looks, which is another plugin. There's a ton of plugins. So Looks is awesome because it just gives you this huge list of different presets that you can start from. So I'll just look through this list, find one I like, and then go through these settings down here and tweak it. And then sometimes I'll add like a curve setting in this one. I add film grain sometimes because I like it. And then I use RSMB, which is again another plugin, but it just adds motion blur and really smooths out the whole thing. And then the last step of the color grading is adding this clarity. Uh, this just adds contrast for when it gets uploaded to YouTube. YouTube compresses the video a lot, so it loses a lot of the contrast and hard edges. So you just add this to make it a little bit cleaner when it's uploaded. My last step is audio editing. For this, it's pretty basic. I just take the audio from the POV clips, I take what I want, and then I press Control alt d or Control d to duplicate, uh, and then I find, you know, like where in the shot that I want to put it, and then, you know, I line it up, and then I press this to turn off the visibility. This means it, had, it has audio playing. If the shot is too quiet, I press L on the clip, and then I can set the decibels, so the higher the value this is, the louder the shot is. The audio editing that I do is really basic. Some people get more in depth by adding sound effects and all that, you could do that. Most of the time I don't really need to because I keep my stuff relatively clean. And then you're ready to export. So I take the composition I want, I set the time frame to where I wanna export, I go to composition, and then I say add to media encoder queue. 
it takes a really long time for it to launch sometimes, especially when you have longer projects. I've run into some issues with the GPU acceleration for whatever reason where it just won't render the project. So I have this set to CPU because I have a pretty strong CPU, but most of the time you can get away with just using the, the GPU acceleration as well. Okay, so this just popped up. This is the video codec, this are your render settings, and this is the output of the file. So click on this to open up the settings. Again, this can take a really, really long time. Sometimes it just never opens and you have to restart Media Encoder. It's kind of a pain. Dynamic Link is not perfect and it's pretty janky. So there's a lot of discussion about the best way to render these videos. And from what I can tell, everybody kind of does it a little bit differently. This is what I personally used and I've never had any issues with it. It comes out fine for what I need, but I'd highly recommend doing your own research and maybe asking some other people to see if there's better settings out there. I have a preset set for the highest render settings that I use, um, and then I'll go in and tweak it every time. But essentially, I render at 30 FPS. I would highly recommend you do the same if you want it to look cinematic, either 30 or 24. As long as you have RSMB, it just makes the entire video look so much better. Uh, I check render at maximum depth. The bitrate is also kind of different for everybody. I set it to VBR2 pass, and by default, I have this at 15, but if it's a shorter video, sometimes I'll set it higher. It doesn't greatly affect the look of the video, but some Sometimes when uploading it to YouTube, uh, you have to render it at a higher bitrate if it's like a 4K video or if it's 2K and 60 FPS, you have to have it at, I think, above 25 megabits per second. But by upping that, you can see the file size here. If I set this from 15 to 50, the file size increases by an insane amount. So if you have the space and the time, you know, obviously the, the larger the bitrate the better quality of the video but if you're uploading to youtube most of the time it doesn't even matter because it compresses it so much audio these are my settings i never changed them again doesn't really matter the output name you click here and then you can go in and set where you want the video to save and then press ok and then you click this green arrow and it starts rendering and then obviously from there to upload it to youtube you just click up here upload video and then drag it in here and something that some people freak out about is when you first upload it, especially when it's a higher quality video, it'll come out as like 360p. If you just give it a few hours, it'll typically process and come out as the higher resolution that you saved it at. So I'll upload videos to YouTube the night before, so I know that it's processed by the time that I upload it in the morning. And there you go. That's pretty much it for me. Everybody has their own process, so I don't want you to take anything away from this as a specific rule you don't have to follow anything i said if you want to do it differently go for it i'm sure people in the comments will be telling me how they do it differently and it's all valid this is just the way that i've done it for the past year and a half i have never run into any issues doing so so it's the only one that i can really recommend if you have any questions at all obviously leave a comment i'll do my best to help you or dm me on twitter if you want you know more direct line of communication and in the meantime consider subscribing it helps a lot there's been a ton of you recently so hopefully this will help Thanks again.